fantastic. And Thank you, everybody. <laughs> ah, I love it, I love it. Well, good morning and welcome to Center for Spiritual Living East Hawaii. I am Reverend Beverly Strutt. I am the spiritual director here. And I get to be a part of all of this with you guys. It's just amazing. I absolutely love it. So as we step into this month of June, where you will see rainbows everywhere, everywhere. I turned onto Facebook um, yesterday morning at whatever time I got onto Facebook. Don't tell anybody I was up early. Um, and it was color. Rainbow colors everywhere. And I was like, oh, that's right, it's June. What a welcome. And you know, as we look around us in our environment, the weather allows for that to be as well. In everything that we do, you get the rainbow clouds. Have you seen that? Oh my goodness, the rainbow clouds. You've got to be in awe of that. And of course, when we see them now, it's just doubly they're doubly in there knowing that we are in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing for all the right reasons. Yes. So happy Pride Month, everybody. I'm getting there. I'm starting with low colors, and I'm building. And as you may all know, that we are actually participating in the Pride Festival on the 22nd, no, 29th. 29th. They wanted to put me in a tutu and a unicorn head, and I'm thinking, no. No! Come on! <laughs> I promise I'll be colorful, but I'm not sure about the unicorn and the tutu. You know, it just takes me back to the old days of my previous careers and thinking, woo, that's going to be interesting. Anyway, well, I do have a funny story to tell you. I was thinking about it today. It was something that happened way back when. Because, you know, every now and then we... Um, when we come into this environment, we really think that the, the leaders here or the ministers or whatever pastor, wherever you are, this environment, whatever church, may have a special connection with the divine, right? Yeah, it's not the truth. We work just as hard as you do. But it's kind of this feeling that, oh, the priests, the minister, the, they should have this wonderful connection. So anyway, I walked up to um, one of the cupboards at, in my previous center, and I needed to get stuff out. And this was a cupboard that really wasn't used very often. It had a combination lock on it. And uh, who knew the combination? I didn't. Anybody got the combination? Nobody had the combination. So eventually we got our minister to come over, and she said, well, okay, I'll give it a shot. I'm like, yeah, okay. She, so she stepped in. She took the combination, the lock. She held it. She took a beautiful deep breath in, and she raised her head up to the sky, and she just sat there for a moment, and we waited, and she said, we waited, and we waited, and then she looked down and went, and it opened. Amazing, huh? We were like, Rev, how did you do that? She goes, it's printed on the ceiling. <laughs> tell you, but we don't always tell you our secrets. We don't want to tell you our secrets because there's a kind of mystique that sometimes you can go, stop the rain, right? Stop the rain. You think I didn't check the weather forecast? No, you stop the rain. So we love it. And it's all just about us being together. So this, this year, we're going, our major theme for the year is rise up. And if you've noticed that there, we've been talking about this, what are we in, six months now? So we've been talking about this for six months, rise up, this whole idea. But we're not talking about these huge steps, these huge mantra steps that we have to change in order to rise. We're looking at the little things. The little things, the little emotions, the little ideas, the little things. We're doing it in little ideas, feelings, and tones, and everything. So the, last month, we were going from good to great to grand. Come on. You know I was in my element with that. I even pray that way. But this month, we're going to holy boldness. Anybody got an idea? I got no idea whatsoever. Well, holy boldness. Well, but we begin this first week with what I call the courageous heart. And part of that, the most important word that came up in this is audacity. 
Audacity. Really? Audaciousness. That's a little bit nicer, but audacity? And I can see all of you going, that's an interesting word. The same way when I brought up vulnerability, same atmosphere. Wow, no, we're not vulnerable. Audacity, that doesn't sound like a very good word. Well, the funny thing is, as with many words in our dictionary, we have taken it and put our feeling tones onto it. It's taken a life of its own. And so audacity or audaciousness has come back to be negative, to represent gall. Who the heck did they think they were? Really? But not in a very nice way. But so we're going to go back. We're going to go back. We're actually, I've got the dictionary Wikipedia. Love that site. It always gives you an interesting perspective on it. It says, boldness or daring, especially with confidence or arrogant disregard, but for what? Arrogant disregard for personal safety, conventional thought, or other restrictions. You notice it said nothing about anybody else. It only said about you. It was all about you. It was about your arrogant disregard for personal safety. Who's, whose job is that? Mine. Conventional thought. I don't have to think the same way as everybody else. Or other restrictions, or as I would say, limitations. Do you think I'm audacious? You better freaking believe it. Because if any of those words are in play right there, I'm saying yes. Yes. I will stand in audacity for all that we do, all that we are. And we go from there to this whole idea that it comes from the Latin for bold and dare. Bold and dare. Daring, boldness, bravery, courage, fearlessness, nerve. These are the words behind audacity. Ah, isn't that nice? Doesn't that take on a whole new feeling when you think about it? So when we lean into being courageous or having a courageous heart and boldness, can you have the audacity to be grand in every way? Can you have that? Can you stand there proudly? And lean into that idea for yourself to be audacious, to be grand in every way. Dr. Ernest Holmes says this. He goes, every desire you have for betterment in life is some echo from deep within forever proclaiming itself, behold, I make all things new. It is an echo from deep within which forever proclaims I'm making things new, an echo from deep inside of you for wanting to be knowing something different in this world. Not playing small. No reason to play small. There's no reason to play small. There's no pie. So you're as big as you are, you're not taking anything from anybody else. You can grow and expand and just be wonderful in that manner, in that way. So Anybody watch the Great British Baking Show? Yeah. <laughs> I love the hands go up there. Well, so I was watching the Great American Baking Show. Same principle, same people, but just on the American side of it. Interesting enough, every now and then they get asked to make a British dessert. And they're like, going, what? What is this? But here is something that just happened in the, the last um, binge that I did. Um, there was... A person that won who had never stepped into any school, any culinary uh, college, had no bakery of her own, was not a professional in any way. So yes, they do say that these are the best um, non-professional bakers, but that's not always the truth. They always have some side hustle going on, right? No. This person literally baked what she baked for her family in her home. Any of you bake for your family in your home? Have baked for your family in your home? Would like to bake for family in your home? I'd come around. Right. Did you ever think to yourself, you know what? I'd like to do that. 
I'd like to put myself in that position and see what part of me can come forward. Not even knowing if I'm good enough. It doesn't matter if you're good enough. Are you enough? Ah, there's the difference. It doesn't matter. Who are we talking to inside of it? It is something within us that is asking us to step forward into something new. But, no, you can't do this. You're not a professional. You're not good enough. You're not that. Don't have the audacity to think you can do it. Yeah, I think you're at the right center if you're listening to this talk right now. Because we know we're going to bag that stuff up and toss it right out of the window because that is not the truth about us at all. And, you know, um, and if you want to lean in there, you're leaning in with the right person. Because one of the things, so I did this on Facebook as well. I don't spend a lot of time on there, I promise. Just enough, enough to make sure I know the news because that's, that's the place I get it from. Anyway, um, there was this, came through... Post this on your, on your page, right? It says, in one word, describe me. Okay. Stupidity is the first thing I thought about when I'm posting this on my page. Really? I'm really going to open myself up to hearing whatever anybody thinks about you. You know, you guys, bless you. Thank you so much for coming today. It was so nice to see you, and we bless you on your way and your day, and we know the highest for you. Thank you, my beloveds. Thank you. Yes. I'm going to interrupt my talk right now and get back to it, because you know I can do that. We had Dr. Libby join us today. We haven't seen her in a very, very long time. She was an active part of our center for many, many, many years. She's a firecracker, and she's somebody that just brought so much life and wonderment, and over the course of the last two years, she's gone through some tremendous medical changes that have changed a lot in her body, but she was here today. Audaciously, she was here today, and I am so happy that she was able to be here, and her family just took her away because it's time for her to move to something else to do, but she came. She came. Didn't play small. She came. All right. So where was I? Oh, yeah, Facebook. So I, I put myself on there, and I go, okay, a, a word to describe me. I had 55 responses. I'm like, and they were nice. <laughs> they were nice. I was actually kind of little, got that little jiggly thing inside. We're like, oh, that was very sweet. But here's what came up mostly in there, besides energetic, you think? Energized, energetic, way out of control, you know, all of that kind of stuff, the energy side of it. The other two words that came up most often were bold, well, actually, it was brave and courageous. And I'm looking at myself going, really? I'm brave? I'm courageous? I never ever thought of myself as being that way because I just do me, right? I've traveled a lot in my life. I've done some wonderful things. But I've never ever, I guess I just never thought about the danger. You know, yeah, sure, I'll go to, I'll go to Jakarta and I'll wander around the streets and work in a club over there. Okay. Well, I guess that's going to happen. I walked through open windows, right? But the reason I was able to do all of this is because I have a trust and a conviction and a faith that everything's for my good. That's just the way I see it. It's like, okay, if it's there, it must be presenting itself for something good in my environment. But I didn't ever think of me actually consciously thinking about doing things. And so when I come to look around me and I watch people not choose, for whatever their reason is, there's no judgment in this. I'm like going, come on, let's do it, let's go. And they go, but what if? I'm like, what was that statement? What if? I go, I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're saying. Because there's this idea of really being able just to step in with conviction and trust. Now, just to let you know, I came from the idea I was a gypsy. Yeah, you know, I used to pretend I was a gypsy. I dressed like a gypsy, danced like a gypsy. And I think maybe that had something to do with it. This constant unknown. 
I'm very comfortable in the... I, I, sh I showed up here, you guys. I had no idea who you were. I had no idea where we were. I had no idea. I'd never been on this side of the island. I showed up here in the unknown. It's been interesting. No, no, it's been fantastic. It's been interesting for everybody. But the same thing is, it's in the unknown. I don't mind the unknown. Because for whatever reason, somewhere along the way in my uh, growth or my expansion, evolution, whatever you came, was this conviction that there is a power for good in the universe greater than I am, and I can use it and do every breath I take. So it gives me a different experience, but I also realize that part of my experience is to be the example and be the pull. Like, come on, get on board, let's go. Come on, be ducks. Let's go. We can do this together. We can. Because it's in that way that we can actually be part of things with each other. But before we even get to that, we have to realize that we deserve it. We're not here to play small. We're not here to play small at all. And I love it that Marianne Williamson says this, because this is what stands in our way. She says this, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Ooh, did you feel that? We are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of the divine. Your plain small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. That's an interesting statement. How often have we put our light under a bushel so that we won't rock the boat? Now, I'm not saying rock the boat because we want to do something that is not beneficial to everyone. I'm talking about rock the boat. Rock the boat, baby. You know, rock the boat. Yeah, get it on. Get it on. Let's have some fun together. Of course we need to rock the boat. We are meant to shine as children do. We are born to make manifest the glory of the divine that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. That is such a key. As we do it, we give others permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. There it is. This is the whole point about being, and I think sometimes that's the reason I was called to ministry, was just to be the crazy person that I am and go, it's okay, come along, let's go have some fun. Let's go be courageous, let's be brave, let's try things we've never done. What's the worst that can happen? We just go back to where we were. And do it again and again. Have you ever seen a bird try and learn to fly? They only give it one shot, right? No. No, no, no. We do it over and over and over again. And in fact, one of the, the stories that I heard about around this topic, there was this beautiful soprano, Lisette Oropesa, and she was performing this beautiful Verdi opera in Parma, Italy. And um, she was doing it solo. But there was a fan in the audience that was listening to this, and when she went into Symphony Libre, which is meant to be sung by a female, with the male off stage, the male voice off stage, this music student, this fan in the audience, noticed that she was without the duet partner, and he boldly stood up and sang the tenor part from the audience. Wow! That takes some courage. And you know that there's a great chance that this would not be anything he would do. He would probably never go on stage and actually do it. But when he saw somebody that was there in need or desired to support this person, he stepped up. 
This is why we do these things. Because either by example or by action, when we step out of our fear, we allow others to do the same. And in turn, we change the vibration of everything around us. Can you imagine what that must have felt like in that auditorium when he just stood up and started singing? Do you know how that vibration probably went through the roof and changed the experience for everybody? Everybody. So being courageous is not just about your own self stuff. It's also about how we interact with others around us. But we forget sometimes that we are courageous. We forget about the things that we've already done in this lifetime. That many people would look at you and go, are you serious? You didn't really actually do that. You know that was crazy, insane, probably put your life in tremendous danger and everything. But it worked out okay. Yeah, but, you know, we do these things. We don't give ourselves credit for what we have already accomplished. And look at that in a true form and go, wow, I actually did that. We don't give ourselves credit for. And this last week in Conversations in Consciousness, Jim was with us in the group, and he brought a story to us. And he related the story. This is around our personal blessings, but it's also around our personal audacity. He brought up the three words that come forward. He goes, we discount our experience. We discount our experience right away. We make it small. We don't look at it. And then we miscount it because we don't actually see it in its true form. And I might be paraphrasing for him. You can always talk with him later and he'll give you the whole detail. All right. So we discount our experience. We miscount it because we don't want to necessarily see it for all that it is worth. But we do recount it. Not recount, but recount. Both words work in this, in this sense. We tell the story again. And as we tell the story again, we start to realize the magnificence of it, the beauty of it. And then we look back and go, why did I discount that? Why did I miscount it? I'll recount it, share it, and now truly know the blessings and the wonderment of the experience that I had. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, Jim, for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Discount, miscount, recount, share. This is how we walk through it. And this way, when we look at it, we can see within ourselves that being audacious was the reason we did those things. We were willing to put ourselves out there, willing to put ourselves into the unknown, willing to try and experience something completely different. Ah. So Dr. Holmes says this as well. Hang on, I'm getting to it. I think I got all my paperwork messed up. Oh, this is great. I love it because it worked out better than I put it, you see? I'm, 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 I have enough audacity to let God do the work. <laughs> yeah. So why, why do we hold ourselves back from truly seeing who we are? Why do we do this? What is there to fear in this? Is it our magnificence? Is it the power that we are absolutely brilliant and we're not allowing that to reveal itself? Are we not being the best expression of the divine that we possibly can because we're holding ourselves back in fear? We're sending our fear dogs out everywhere. We're judging others for standing up for themselves. I love the fear dogs. I love the fear I love the dogs. Yeah, you know, you said 10 dogs. I think for memory, I have three left. <laughs> And man, they're old. They're slow. They don't come back very quickly. I tempt them with biscuits and bones. And yeah, they're like out there. They're like, why am I here? Oh, let me just roll over and have a good time for a little bit. So I love the dogs. Anyway, so we, we, send, these, we send these out. But um, let me get back to Dr. Michael Beckwith. He says, having courage 
To come face to face with ourselves is the portal through which we can view the pristine features of our original face which includes the qualities of unconditional love, compassion, peace, joy, creativity, and contentment of being. You know, it requires audacity to do that as well. So when we stand there audaciously looking at who we are, we get to see the truth of who we are. We get to see that we are brilliant, wonderful, kind, compassionate people because we're now willing to stand in it and be it, to face with courage the pristine features of who we truly are. Man, that's beautiful. That is so fantastic. And to do that, and you know what? And then you come here um, to Science of Mind, and what do we do? We go, okay, we've got tools. Yes, come on, bring it in. Let's see how magnificent we are. We don't say, oh gosh, yeah, you're not good enough. Mm, you've got to change this, this. You've got to, oh, you've got to be little. Yeah, I wonder if anybody in this congregation thinks they have to be little. <laughs> come on. Can you see what I'm wearing? You don't have to be little. You can be as audacious as you like, because this is the place for your craziness for it to be. Dr. Holmes says, every person represents an individualization of the universal wholeness, the love, the peace, the joy, the freedom of the spirit. Therefore, we have a divine right to rise above fear, impoverishment, and disease. We should have confidence that the power of the spirit expresses through every atom of our being now, this moment. Not maybe down the road. Now. We are the individualizations of this now moment. This is what we get to be and to do. And in Science of Mind, our teaching, we have these fantastic tools to do it. We start with our basic affirmations, and we move into our spiritual mind treatment, which is designed to claim this wonderment for ourselves, to have the greatest adventure, to live boldly in our life to be in the boldness of our life. And of all of you that have maybe been through classes or just heard enough of these talks to know that when we do an affirmation, when we do a spiritual mind treatment, if the word audaciousness doesn't stand there in full meaning, then I don't understand what we're doing. Because in the act of saying an affirmation, we are literally claiming something that we are not already in our minds. We're claiming something that we don't always believe we are. But it is something wanting to be known from inside of you that is asking you to move forward. Know this before you know it. Move to a practitioner. Move to a minister. Know it for me before I can know it for myself. Because I am standing in my audaciousness to know that this is a possibility. This is what I desire. So literally our tools are audacious. Spiritual mind treatment. Man, that's a magnificent way to get a demonstration for something you don't believe you can have, maybe. Something you don't believe that you are. But we claim it. We stand as science of mind, religious science folks, and say, audaciously, I am going to claim this with full voice. Even so Sometimes you've got to get the person along. They like go, eh, I'm not so sure if I believe this yet. Come on in. I'm going to call this audacity to be this greatest expression of the divine you can possibly be. Yes, be courageous, be bold, claim it, say it, and don't let anybody look around you and judge. And of course, don't judge anybody else, of course, right? If you think, oh, oh God, the audacity of that person, go, wow, what does audacity mean? Ah, oh, the audacity of that person. Yes, celebrate that in people because it is a way that we can move forward. The other side is just judgment and eh, bad dogs. We don't need to do that. Yeah, not at all. And the thing is, when we do all of this, we are here not only to claim our own wonderment, 
but to be the example of what it can be, to change the vibration for everybody else, to open that door so wide that they can't help but come on in and know the same truth that you are experiencing. Every single day, in every single way, there are moments and times wonderment for you to stand up and say, yes, this is audacious, and I do it with great zeal. Yes, absolutely. So I am going to close today with a beautiful piece from 365 Days of Richer Living with Dr. Ernest Holmes and Charles Barker. I nearly said Barclay. No, Charles Barclay didn't do it. He didn't put up any three, nothing. Charles Barker. I know you can see where my hair goes. <laughs> and um, I'm going to read it to you. And I'm going to take it into our prayer. So I invite you just to sit back, relax, prepare yourself as if you would for prayer. And I'm going to go ahead and read this piece and then close us out for this, for the talk today. I am true to my highest principles. From Emerson we read, Thou shalt not profess that which thou dost not believe. Thou shalt not heed the voice of man when it agrees not with the voice of God in thine own soul. Dr. Holmes says, To profess is easy, to practice is not so easy. All people proclaim their belief in God, but they rely on material help in every problem and pray as a last resort. I now take my stand with myself. I have no one other with whom to deal. I am in my own world, and I now place God at the center and know that good appears at the circumference. I refuse to declare my faith in God and still continue in my old material patterns of behavior. Take a breath in. Today, the divine becomes my physician, my lawyer, my counselor, and my co-worker. I lean not on my own understanding. I depend on it who protected projected me as its own. I shout from the housetops my own divinity. I cry out to all my dependence on the indwelling spirit. I am not a metaphysician in name only. I practice what I believe. I pray my way out of every problem and prove God in every experience. The confines of my thinking extend to include the good of all. I truly practice the brotherhood of humanity. I see each soul as God sees them and declare that its place in my life is one of blessing. I am not under the material influence of nations, economic levels, nor world conditions. I am an independent creation of a perfect mind living in the atmosphere of my own consciousness. What I decree is mind is my experience in the world. I know but one standard and one principle, the truth. To these I dedicate my thoughts, my motives, and my responses. Within me is the true mind of the spirit. It invites me to partake of its ideas, and to prosper in all my ways, to whisper thoughts that are contrary to human opinions and worldly wisdom. But I listen to the inner wisdom and act in accordance with it. No person can dissuade me. No group can alarm me. I know the right, and I do the right. I am true to my highest knowledge of and to my greatest vision of God and to my greatest vision of spiritual man. I am undaunted by others. 
I am true to my beliefs. And so it is. Thank you, my beloveds. Oh, man. How do you follow that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs>